Uh, we, I think if you aren't aware of this, many of you in this room are, but we are facing for the first time since the 19, early 1970s a very dramatic increase in the death rate. Uh, the public, some politicians, obviously not Andrew, uh, believe that because we're all getting healthier that means fewer of us are dying. Unfortunately, completely the opposite is the case and the baby boomers of the 50s, which includes me, are now getting to a stage where we may, may need a bit more support and care. Uh, every year uh, in England, just short of a quarter of a billion pounds is spent on specialist palliative care services in our, our wonderful hospices. But um, I've heard Mike Richards, the National Cancer Director, uh, say that the actual overall cost of end-of-life care to the NHS and social care services is measured in billions of pounds. What happens to our families and to us at the end of our lives clearly affects us all. It is an unfortunate and inevitable truth that we all die. During my nine years at Marie Curie, I have seen improvement in access to and provision of better palliative and end-of-life care. But I think everyone in this room will agree that we have a long way to go to reach a position where people get the care and support they need and want. Improving end-of-life care outcomes is a crucial part of improving overall health outcomes. And Marie Curie has fought furiously, as have many others here, uh, for that particular cause. And we are committed to campaigning for more action. And we're not a campaigning charity. The four points on which we are going to be pressing hard, and, and this is a continuation of what we're already doing, is firstly having an open discussion in our society about death and dying. Secondly, to address the inequality in the provision of care and support at the end of life geographically and across conditions. I say only half in jest that when I um, leave Marie Curie, because the inequities in death and dying are huge. And I really can, we have a contract with every single healthcare provider in Britain, except for three. Obviously, you don't want to die there. Uh, but, uh, but the size of the contracts in relation to the population in the primary care trusts uh, is um, scarily different. And there is an interesting analogy between the wealth of the community and the quality of end-of-life care. And we would observe, on the whole, it's in inverse proportion. So the poorer the community, the better the end-of-life care. It's very, it's very strange, not, not often the case in some areas. The third point on which we are campaigning vigorously is calling for further improvements in the way different sectors and agencies work together for the benefit of terminally ill people and their families and carers. So it could well be in a primary care trust that a patient has to go into hospital rather than be cared for in the community by Marie Curie because the budget mark Marie Curie has run out there's still a very large budget in existence uh, for continuing care, but within the primary care trust, it seems sometimes impossible to join these two up together. Uh, and then I think the point that I alluded to at the beginning is one that we just have to begin to take more seriously. We've got to look further than 12 months ahead and simply recognize that the number of deaths in this country is set to rise dramatically over the next 20 years. There will not be enough professional staff, in my view, to deal with this issue. And we have to make far greater use of volunteers in supporting patients and families to enable them to die where they want to. And goodness me, we need to do all this and to improve the quality of care and support in times of financial squeeze and economic recession. We've heard from, uh, from the current government uh, that uh, they have pledged an additional 265 million pounds uh, of end-of-life care funding. The, Con the Conservative Party confirmed in their draft manifesto that they will continue the £10 million uh, made available for children's hospices. Now we were very much hoping to hear something about adult care and whether that money will continue obviously this afternoon. But we're so looking forward to hearing from Andrew uh, uh, and hearing uh, his views on how the Conservatives will approach, if elected, at uh, this vital health stream, one of the eight core health streams of end-of-life care.